Good morning, everyone. Today, I'll talk about the skyrocketing house price in Taiwan and the solutions to it. And as the younger generation in Taiwan, it is important to you because it is typical for Taiwanese people to possess their own dwelling places, no matter it is a house or an apartment. That's a very traditional thought of Taiwanese people. In the old days, commoners regarded buying their own domiciles as an outset to settle down and start their family. But things are quite different now, and I'll explain why. Okay, so <laughs> Taiwan has, uh, according to the Commonwealth magazine, Taiwan has the higher, highest average of house price and house rents. So that's Taiwan, I mean, as a symbol. And next to Taiwan is Japan. Uh, so <clears throat> for an ordinary Taiwanese office worker, they would have to save up to 13 years without spending their money, uh, without spending the salary, so they can have enough money to purchase their own, uh, to purchase an apartment. And when I say an apartment, I mean by a really small apartment that they can buy. And and then. However, Japan, Japanese people only have to save to seven years and Koreans for four and a half years. But the gross, the gross national income of Japan and Korea are much higher than Taiwan. And that means Japanese and Korean people are making more uh, salary than Taiwanese people. But their house price is relatively ch uh, cheaper than the house price in Taiwan. So this is becoming an impending problem. But how do we deal with this problem? Okay. So here's the solution. Uh, according to uh, a prestigious professor uh, in the Department of Land Ec Economics in National Chinese University, his name is Dan Jing Ou, this handsome man. Okay. Uh, so the best solution to solve uh, the bulging house price is to improve uh, the public infrastructure and the public transportation in Taiwan. Uh, Zhang Jun'o says that uh, the house price in Taiwan is very expensive because uh, most people they tend to buy houses in big metropolitan so cities uh, like Taipei, Taichung, or Kaohsiung, and why they buy houses uh, in these cities is that uh, the transportation uh, and the urban construction in these cities are better. So people do not buy uh, houses in uh, suburban areas. So that's why uh, the house price uh, is bulging high. The, the government uh, the go uh, since this is a big problem in Taiwan, uh, many people are complaining. So um, the government has had two uh, two solutions too. But uh, according to the Liber uh, Liberty Times in Taiwan, people think that uh, the solution of the government uh, is not very efficient. So. The first solution of the government is the transparency of the house market. Which, uh, talking about transparency, what the government do is to request the speculators and the real estate agencies to list out the details of their um, housing business, so that the public can get access to um, the house price uh, of the market transparently. And. But then people complain that uh, when the government requests um, the speculators and real estate agencies uh, of the transparency of the markets, then uh, those uh, business dealers uh, tend to bid up the prices even more so that uh, the people will suffer from even higher house prices because, uh, uh, because uh, the business dealers are trying to bid out the price. And the second solution of the government is to use preferential mortgage. Uh, a used preferential mortgage uh, is a housing loan 
uh, that uh, that gives a low lending rate. So lending rate of the youth preferential mortgage is less than 1% per year, which means if you, for example, if you borrow 300 NT uh, from government, governments to buy a house, then uh, after a year, the, uh, the loan interest will be free new Taiwanese dollars. So it's less than 1%. So the use preferential market seems fairly enough and seems like a good solution. However, uh, experts uh, of real estate agencies says that we should, take, we should look at the subprime mortgage in the United States as a reflection. In the United States, um, some banks and private loans have uh, loans similar to youth preferential mortgage and they lend out money to youth uh, with low credits. But then in the end, they couldn't get the money back. So uh, the experts in Taiwan, they fear that um, the youth without the ability to pay back um, the loans to the governments will cause another problem. They will make deficits for the governments and the governments will, uh, will have loss in their uh, national interests. Okay. So, and also that the government should not interfere into the free markets because uh, it is unconstitutional and against the free trade law. And also, why my uh, why uh, establishing a better public infrastructure and transportation is a more desirable solution? Is that uh, according according to New York Times, the only city that is internationalized that is considered internationalized in Taiwan is Taipei, and the rank is pretty low, and the reason why. Uh, the cities in Taiwan have lower marks compared to other uh, metropolitan cities in Southeast Asia. It's because the transportation in Taiwan is uh, relatively poor. And also the urban construction is not well planned. And also by improving uh, the city's infrastructure and transportation, people uh, will receive more convenience. And it seems more like a long, a long range plan which will benefit people's quality of living in the long run. Okay. So sooner or later, as we, the younger generation of Taiwan, we'll have to purchase a house of our own. Maybe some of us have already have a place today, a place to stay, uh, which is our parents' uh, place. But according to uh, the China Post in Taiwan, uh, more than 65% uh, of the younger generation, uh, they don't have actually have a place of their own, which is that they're living in a, uh, they're renting an apartment or so. So as a younger generation of Taiwan, are you ready to start saving some money? Or should the government start handling their budgets in a wiser way, which is to build more public infrastructure and transportation? Thank you.